What's up my friends? In this video, I'm checking out this, the solid state SSL 12 audio interface that, dear God, has a lot of tricks up its sleeve. So in this video, I'll run through its features, go through those five things that people just aren't talking about with this unit, go through the build quality, the value, the user experience, and of course, I like a balanced video, so there'll be plenty of pros and cons. If you're new around here, I'm Harv, and I have lots of videos about videography and audio gear reviews and tutorials on my channel. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I always get straight to the good stuff on these videos. And I have time stamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bits you want. This video is not brought to you by any company or sponsor, except for maybe my Patreon backers. And the idea with that is it's a non-profit thing. Any funds from Patreon go back into the channel to buy gear and then I review gear and then give the gear to my backers. So if these videos help you, do consider becoming a backer. It's just the cost of a cup of coffee and I do lots of giveaways and that kind of thing. However, the SSL 12, I bought this with my own cash, and that's just because I was replacing the unit that I've been using for about the last four years, which is the original SPL Crimson. So with that in mind, what is the SSL 12? The SSL 12 is a desktop audio interface from the, some say, legendary studio console manufacturer, Solid State Logic. I say some say legendary because Honestly, a lot of people don't like the sound that you get from SSL desks. And when, if you Google it, you'll see people saying that they sound, you know, toppy or lacking bass or just uh, lacking character or even sometimes clinical. But on the flip side, a lot of people love the sound of SSL desks. And those people say that it sounds, you know, balanced and with massive headroom and transparent and clean. And I'll get to my thoughts on this in just a bit. So the SSL 12 has, in my opinion, a misleading name. Let's look at the entry level SSL 2 and 2 Plus, which have, you guessed it, two mic inputs. The SSL 12, on the other hand, has, you guessed it, four mic inputs. Wait, what? Yes, you get 12 inputs of digital conversion, but the extra eight are not available unless you connect another device to the ADAT port on the back. And of course that involves uh, an extra device and extra spending. In the first sentence on the SSL 12 on SSL's website, they say 12 in and eight out. The 12 ins, I, I've already mentioned that just a minute ago, but the eight outs, I kind of question them as well, because, you know, sure, there are four outputs on the back of the unit, and the other four, to make up eight, are from the two headphone outs, which are stereo, and yeah. I know this is something that companies do, and I know those outputs can be used in different ways, but for me, that's kind of a stingy way to advertise I.O. in a product like this. So I say it should be called the SSL 4 Plus because, you know, out of the box without adding anything, you get four mic inputs. As for the other features, I imagine if you've clicked on this video, you're aware of some of them. But my question is, why are people focusing so much on the 4K button on this unit? The 4K button, in case you're not aware, is a button on the unit which adds the sound of the 4000 series large consoles from yesteryear. And is it DSP? Is it a physical circuit? I couldn't find that information. Do let me know if you know. But what I'm imagining is it's some form of DSP that's adding harmonic distortion in the circuit. And I don't know, I, I kind of I kind of want to A-B it. Should we do that now? Let's do it. So here we are, I'm just seeing how the SSL 12 sounds on my voice. Um, this is a new room for me, I don't know if you noticed that in the, uh, in the intro. Um, so it's relatively untreated, you can probably hear that. Uh, and so, I mean, the sound's not gonna sound great at this stage, it will improve. I'm putting things in place to improve it. And this mic, it's the AKG C14, C414 XLS. And uh, let's switch over now and see what the 4K button sounds like. And now we have the 4K button engaged. Can you hear a difference? I'm thinking it's a top end thing. Maybe things might sound a little more sibilant. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I listened to it in the headphones, wasn't sure. 
let me know what you think. So the really obvious thing that this 4K button does is it adds gain and, you know, louder sounds better. So let's not get fooled by that and just look at the tonal differences. And I'm seeing less roll off up at the really high frequencies, definitely more extended into 20 kilohertz range, and then quite a bit more between 2 and 4K, which, you know, these things combined really would contribute to that kind of feeling of presence. So there we go, not really sure myself. I have read that some people have used it on entire mixes and it kind of, you know, the cumulative effect adds to a kind of toppy sounding mix. So personally, I would advise not using it or being very sparing or, or selective of what you use the 4K button with because you know, the more you bake it in, the, I think the, the harder it's gonna be to remove this. So what about the features that are actually great? a la the title of this video. So the first thing being that the SSL unlocks 32-bit recording, and this is kind of a big deal. It means, you know, you've got much more headroom, it reduces the need for, you know, to use compression when recording things, and you, you kind of have to worry less about clipping your signal if you've got something that's particularly hot that you're recording. When looking into this, this actually isn't found on many of the high-end interfaces out there. We're talking the Universal Audio Apollo X16, even the top-end interfaces from Apogee and Antelope Audio. So 32-bit is the future. I'm using it right now, and I never want to record in anything but 32-bit from now on. The SSL 12 is. USB powered, and I think this is a really underrated feature. For someone like me who's constantly looking for ways to simplify and declutter things, I really appreciate this. This also makes mobile recording really easy. Just, you know, grab the SSL 12, a cable, your laptop, and record. Thirdly, it has two headphone outs. And let's face it, this is not a product that's designed for larger studios. This is a product that's designed for guys that are into audio recording and are serious about their setups for probably home recording. And I think that this is, you know, a really nice feature because it means that for things like collaborative recording, it's just it's just easy to have, you know, the two headphone outputs. Um, it's really thoughtful is the word. Number four, and the SSL 12 has design elements that make it really just uh, a joy to use and slick and simple. The one that sticks out the most is it has an on-off button. And I know that that sounds ridiculous because, you know, you just assume that products do, but they kind of don't sometimes. You know, like if, for example, the SPL Crimson interface that I've just been using for four years, no on-off button. You kind of have to plug it in and unplug it when you want to switch it on and off. So I appreciate a button. Number five, and the XLR mic inputs are where they should be on the rear of the unit. Unlike the Universal Audio 476P and the other units in the Volt range, which have them on the front. And of course that means that, you know, with them being on the rear, you don't have cables cluttering your desk, hanging off the front and just getting in the way. I love that. And it was actually a, pretty big factor of me choosing this over one of those Universal Audio Vault units. The SSL 12 has some pretty awesome software, so let me give you a really quick whistle-stop tour of that now. The software is called SSL 360, and when you first load up, this is what you'll see. It'll show you any SSL devices you've got connected, and as you can see, I've got the SSL 12, and it will also tell you if there's any kind of firmware updates needed. That's handy. I don't want to go through and show you every single screen. I just want to keep this short and sweet. So to be honest, this is probably the only screen that you'll likely need. Using this screen, you can create monitor mixes for headphone A, B, and line out three and four. There's a little bit of customization you can do with some of the buttons, but honestly, that's not this video. This is just to show you really what this looks like. So that software is potentially useful. However, I suspect that most SSL 12 users might not use it, they'll probably use the unit as a standalone uh, interface and maybe even won't even download the software. It does kind of unlock more options for you. You can do things like create uh, monitor mixes for some of the different outputs, which is, you know, handy. But just to be crystal clear, you don't need the software to use the SSL 12, so. Next, onto the build quality. And subjectively, the design is kind of cold austere 
I mean, it's 2023 at the time of filming. I mean, where's the wood? A la the Universal Audio Vault range, which have the side panel wooden accents, which just looks so great, and the top panel is just a, a joy to look at. I just feel like SSL didn't need to stick so rigidly to their brand aesthetic. I feel like they could have been more generous in the way that they uh, have built this thing, and also um, just just created a design that's more sort of stylish and elevated, but while still retaining their kind of SSL-ness. You know what I mean? As for the materials used to construct it, I'm generally a little underwhelmed. The main panel is metal and feels solid, but the rest is fairly plasticky, albeit not cheap plasticky. One thing I don't love is I wish all of the dials were just a little more dampened, and in particular, the main volume uh, monitor control volume knob, on my version anyway, is just a little misaligned, so when you turn it, it turn, it wobbles a little bit, and um, it, it bugs me a bit. I will say I don't think the SSL12 photographs very well. I don't think it's very a very photogenic product, even though I've, I've done my best with these clips, and I'm not really sure why that is. The printed text on the unit and other design elements are clean, clear and minimalistic. I'd say what's missing is just a little bit of design generosity, as I mentioned, a bit of flair. So, I mean, maybe, you know, the way that this kind of thing looks isn't important to you, um, and that's probably a good thing, but what you should care about is the user experience and the user interface, and that is what I'm talking about next. First up, the user interface, and I would say, honestly, this is a real strength of the SSL 12, it's so simple and um, and so easy that it's almost not worth talking about. But you know, I appreciate simplicity, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a big plus. The only aspect of the interface side of things which has the potential to become more complicated is with the software. And especially if you're gonna add any more inputs using the ADAT input and um, and then start doing uh, monitor mixes and that kind of thing. But again, if you don't need to do that and you're happy with just the standalone four mic inputs that this comes with, again, you don't need the software at all. Moving on to the overall user experience, and again, this is a massive strength because it is so uh, simple. It's a product that really just kind of gets out of your way and lets you get on with what you're doing. Uh, I mean, a nice example is when, when I unboxed it, I took it out of the box and the, I got the unit and a USB cable and, and nothing else, um, which I really like. Usually, uh, sometimes on these videos I do unboxing. This is one time where I, I took it out and thought, <laughs> there's, no, there's no point. You get the unit and a USB. The only user experience potential negative is something I noticed, and that's the amount of volume that's available on the uh, headphone outputs. Just uh, just don't be surprised if most of the time it's fairly cranked because, you know, it is, yeah, you don't get a huge amount. So overall, the user experience is just simple and seamless. Usually I have lots to talk about in this segment, but not in this case. It just, it's just easy. However, something that I care more about is how easy it is to get a good sound from the SSL 12. And also, you know, what is the SSL sound? So just to give my thoughts on what we just heard, and to me the SSL really does sound quite clean, and to my ear 
the word that comes to mind is neutral. With the 4K button, I, I'm not a fan, to be honest. As I pointed out during the recording, I heard a weird phasey noise on the third chord. Definitely rewind and have a look for yourself. And I have no doubt that that is something to do with the harmonic distortion that's being added. That's the kind of thing that I would never want to commit to. However, through the Heritage Audio Brit Strip, which if you're not familiar, is a channel strip based on Neve circuitry. That to me is my favorite of the lot. It's a little softer, it's a little warmer, and I suspect this will translate better when layering up different instruments. Next on to value for money and alternatives. And the closest alternative I would say is the Universal Audio Vault 476P, which is a similarly equipped unit, albeit slightly cheaper. It has a more boxy aesthetic, but with the wood accents, the nice color scheme and cool looking lights, it's definitely the more attractive unit to have sat on your desk. You don't get 32 bit recording. The XLR inputs are in the wrong place. And, you know, there are other small design elements from a workflow point of view that I prefer on the SSL 12. But tell you what, the software you get with the Universal Audio, I mean, they're pretty well known for that. It's pretty good. Like the SSL 12, the Vault range also have a gimmick button. The 76 compressor button adds highly regarded 1176 style compression independently to the inputs. And in my opinion, that's far more useful than the 4K button that you get on the SSL 12. Also notice that it's called the 476P, four preamps with 76 style compression. It makes sense, doesn't it? This is for your benefit, SSL. Next onto the pros and cons. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing it in a slightly different way. Pros, cons, and meh. I wonder if this is gonna catch on. Let's do it. Starting with the pros and 32-bit recording is the future. I never want to record 24-bit again. It's USB powered, which means less cables, less wall plugs and better portability. Two headphone outs is really handy for the way I believe the SSL will be used. The design from a practicality standpoint is very good. An on off switch, simple interface, super easy to use. The inputs are on the back where they should be. And this just means less clutter on and hanging off the front of your desk. And then the cons and I find this aesthetically clinical. I really think there was opportunity to have a more interesting looking unit with more flair and just a bit elevated. SSL 12 is a deceptive name. You don't get 12 inputs without adding other hardware. It probably should be called the SSL 4 or SSL 4 Plus. For me, the dials should be a little bit more dampened with a bit more resistance. I just think this would add to the feel of quality. There's also not tons of volume available on the headphone out. Of course, this is gonna vary depending on the ohmage of your headphones, but don't be surprised if you're cranking that output. And then meh, things that I didn't really want to include in either. Firstly, the 4K button. It's just a bit gimmicky, and in my opinion, certainly not a reason to buy the SSL 12, amongst many reasons reasons why you should. The SSL sound, some people love it, lots of people loathe it. Personally, I find it to be neutral sounding, which is kind of no bad thing. Most of the time, I'll be using my Heritage Audio Brit Strip channel strip in front of my SSL 12. Definitely check out my recent review of that because, oh wow, does that Brit Strip ooze class. And finally, value. It's pretty good value. I can't put it in the pros and cons. If it looked and felt higher quality, then it would definitely be a pro. Finally, to my opinion, and whilst there are a few things that I don't like about the SSL 12, you know, the, the lack of oomph on the headphone outputs, the, you know, there's a few design elements that I, I think it could be, you know, just more interesting. It is a no nonsense, no frills, low profile audio interface that has way more that I love about it. I mean, those five things that I mentioned, you know, in the title and at the top of the video, really do add up and just make it what is, in my opinion, a really fantastic audio interface. So buy this if you're considering buying a Universal Audio Vault 476 or equivalent. And those five things that I mentioned, the five reasons really do make this a, a thing worth buying, especially the 32-bit recording. Don't buy this if you're buying it for the 4K button. It's just not gonna transform your audio into a kind of big console sounding. It just won't make that 
it won't transcend your audio like you know like the the promises out there so also i don't think it's worth baking that kind of sound in so um buy it for the other reasons anyway that's it for now i just hope you found this interesting and helpful my question of the day for you is this what do you think of that 4k button is it uh is it cool is it a gimmick i'll see you in the comments section i've now made hundreds of videos about audio and video of which YouTube has recommended this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a better video. See you guys.